Hello there beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are doing well. I have been in a very reflective state of late and I wanted to keep it a hundred percent real when it comes to being dumb AF. I've made some huge mistakes when it has come to buying stuff that has rendered me losing a couple of thousand pounds that I cannot get back. They have dusted off into the ether. They have gone. And I'm going to be honest and I'm going to share with you those like mistakes that I've made, the purchases. I'm like, why did you, why did you buy that? The tears are dripping from my eyes thinking about the fact that I could have had that cash in the bank. I could have had that cash in an ISA, a pension pot, a property, but it has gone. It has left the building. Whether you're broke, whether have you have money, you can make some dumb ass purchasing mistakes. And I do not want you to do that. So I'm gonna go in and tell you about my worst ever purchases. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna scale it up, okay? We're gonna start from like the lower price purchases to the higher price purchases. I've made a few purchases of designer items, especially when it comes to clothing or dresses, I'll never wear again. How many of you guys have gone out and bought that birthday dress? I spent um, two, two, <laughs> I spent two pounds. Oh my God, this is hurting. I spent 2,000 pounds on a birthday dress. Let, let, me get, let me get the birthday dress for you guys, hold on. Can we just talk about this dancing with the stars, dancing on ice? I'm a ballroom dancer dress that cost two thousand pounds. I was lastminute.com and I didn't have an outfit to wear, and I knew I wanted stand something stand out because this is gonna be a um, like a milestone birthday, and I was having a big party. It was like Casino Royale theme. And yeah, I spent £2,000 on this dress. I'm not gonna lie, it's a fabulous dress, darling. Fabulous, darling, fabulous. But has it ever been worn again? Will it ever be worn again? So what we have is a depreciating liability in my closet. I'm gonna tell you right now, I wore this dress for approximately five hours. Let's do the maths there. 2,000 divided by five hours. A 400 pound, oh my eyes are twitching. 400 pounds an hour dress. I would advise people who are looking for a special occasion dress, they've got a ball to go to, an event to go to, or something like where they really wanna like push the boat out and stand out, rent a dress or pay a stylist. Going out of the way to like have 2,000 pound dresses just sitting in my closet, I those days are gone and as I get a bit older and a little bit fatter I can't even fit into it anymore no <laughs> no that was money not well spent next up for me it is designer items that are trendy but don't necessarily suit and I have a specific pair of shoes that I bought these were the Balenciagas, the ones that look like socks. The ones that look like socks. Yeah, Cardi B had it in a song. Yeah, yeah. I thought I was cool. Oh, I'll get the, the Balenciagas that look like socks, won't I? Won't I? And I'm not gonna lie, I think they're fabulous. I think they look amazing. I just don't think that they look all that on me. Now, the reason I bought these, because I just wanted them. I wanted the sock boot, and they had the ankle version, but they had all sold out everywhere. And then these are literally thigh high, past the knee, up to the crotch level high, right? I just gotta show you, like, this is a never ending story in a shoe. Never ending story. Look at the shoe. This is a shoe, people. It's a shoe. It's a shoe. It's a shoe, it's a shoe, it's a tight. And I'm gonna be honest with you, these are the most impractical shoes that never get worn. These are 1,375. Did I really pay that for a shoe? Did I, did I really? I'm just looking at this shoe and thinking I really paid that price for a tight. It's a tight, it's a, it's a legging shoe. I think I've worn them twice in two years. <laughs> And it's because I feel like my feet look really long. I kind of suffer from longish feet. Don't buy trendy items 
unless you know that you're gonna wear them in longevity and that they suit you. I'm not confident enough that these suit me and are that wearable for me. But if you like these sock boots and you like the shong shong shong, the idea of jousting with a shoe, then feel free. Next up is kind of in the same vein. And I've done this two or three times. Sometimes it's been fine and sometimes it's not been that fine. And it's buying the hot, 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 hot handbag, right? <laughs> That's a lot of hot. It's buying the super on-trend piece of clothing that you see on Instagram. I'm an info commercial queen and sometimes I see stuff on people and I'm like, oh my gosh, I really, really want it. And this happens a lot with me when it comes to handbags. And if I show you my collection of handbags, I'd say at least six of them are because, you know, I saw them on the, on, on the Instagram and um, it made me buy it. And I regret 50% of those purchases. Do you guys remember this? I paid 1,600, for this. This was the trendy it bag of like 2017. Everyone had it in every single um, color. I don't wear this bag. It is gathering dust. I'm not gonna lie, it's a great bag, but I found that bags like this, they get duped all the time. And I think there's something about them that isn't that classic. And for me, when I pick up designer bags, they need to be wearable like regularly. This <laughs> is my Louis Vuitton Victoria. I think I might have spent 2,100 on this. Um, and I wasn't even sure about it when I purchased it, but I wanted something with the Louis V print all over it because that was kind of trendy. And it's so funny, I, I hated bags that had lots of print on them and I don't know why I was so keen to buy it, but 2,000 down the dra drain because like the name sounds, it's kind of grandma-y and I don't wear it. And the blue, oh my gosh, I don't wear navy. And then the gold, it's so gold. Oh, it's so, it's hurting my eyes. And I think I bought this because I saw a few people with it. I saw it in the store, I liked it. It wasn't 5,000 pounds. I was like, okay, this one I can afford. But then realistically, it's not even my style. And I think that when you're picking items, don't just look at it and think, well, everyone else has got it, I need it. No. Cause that thing's gonna be sitting in your closet looking like a sore thumb. No, buy what one you can afford and two you know goes with everything else in your collection and that you would wear every day. <sighs> this one, it's not the initial cost but it's actually the cumulative cost and it is picking up every new phone that comes out inevitably every damn year. Phones back in the day used to cost like 200 pounds, right? And then they started costing like 800 pounds and then they're like a thousand pounds. And then you had a phone for like two or three years and now you have a phone every eight months. And I think I stopped this now, but it was like buying the new phone because the camera was gonna be better. Listen, I have cam, look, what am I filming with? I have a camera, I have a little G7X, I have a phone. How many new cameras do I need? It's excessive. I don't need an upgrade until something else comes that's really, really mind blowing that I really, really need. And I don't, I don't do, every, I'm stopping every upgrade for every new phone that comes out. Personally, I like the Pixel phone and the Pixel 2 is sick. I'm gonna say that, yeah, actually that upgrade was good because Pixel's still a relatively new phone. But with the iPhones, I'm not getting every new iPhone that comes out. I don't care if you've got a colored back. So lastly, it's my largest and most regrettable purchase. Um, and it's gonna really make my total look really crazy high. It was purchasing a new Mercedes Benz. <laughs> new money, new money problems. <laughs> so what had happened was, what had happened was that um, I was very lucky. I'd been working, I'd bought a house, my mortgage rate had gone down, me and my husband, husband were cushy with some money coming in and we had cash. And at this point in time, we had 30,000 pounds. And it, I know it's a big number. We had 30,000 pounds floating around, floating around, right? And you know what we said we'll do with that 30,000 pounds? We decided to take that 30,000 pounds cash and buy a car. 
We had a nice little Mercedes E-Class convertible, you know. Do you know that in the UK, we have the highest rate of people purchasing convertible cars in a location where it rains 70% of the time? What's wrong with us? So someone, someone answered me that question. The top down, I swear, that top came down maybe five times in one year. As soon as that car drove off of the forecourt, do you know what I smelt? Depreciation. Do you know what happens a year later? Depreciation. I like nice cars, and I don't mind paying for nice cars, but cash down, like large amounts of cash down for a car, no. Because now after, you know, I was enjoying my E-Class convertible lifestyle, you know, low riding and all sorts, I happened to be pregnant, and as I'm struggling with my pregnant belly, I couldn't fit into the car. Where are you gonna put the baby in the car seat? So a year and a half later, we're like, well, we need a new car. And then when we now went to go and trade it in, that car in the space of a year and a half was worth 18,000 pounds. It had lost 12,000 pounds in a year and a half. That's a thousand pounds a month lost in value. Do you know what you can do? Lease a car for cheaper than that, right? Now, when it does come to buying a car, I will say this, right? There's, there's different op options. And yes, it's a good idea to buy cash if you don't plan on changing your car regularly, if you can afford the car, you have the cash, and you know you're not gonna be someone that every few years you're gonna want a, a new car, and that you're, not, you're buying something that works, gets you from A to B, and you're not about, you know, switching it up. But if you are someone who's about switching it up regularly, like, you're just going to end up, um, losing a lot of money on cars really cars can last 15 years 20 years but well, most of us are greedy and we want a new car every three years so yeah i'm gonna say that i'm that kind of person nowadays <laughs> but you know if i'm gonna be sensible i'll be i'm gonna keep this car for 15 years and actually we have two cars we've got a porsche and we also have a car that is literally 15 years old and it's still running yeah that the cash that went down for that car is still keeping us going okay some days bougie some days take the volkswagen polo all right guys that is me done that is me being honest about my worst ever purchases and i'm not saying that i'm perfect now but I definitely think I'm wiser and smarter when it comes to my fashion buying decisions. And I still like a designer piece. And I still like a handbag. And I still like a shoe. But I make sure these are items that I'm going to love and wear over and over again. That make me feel good on the inside and outside. And know that you can't actually get happiness from material things. But it's nice to have. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you all later. Bye.